In the previous videos, we have covered the use of conditional and logical operators in Grasshopper. These operators evaluate certain condition or rule and return Boolean results. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to filter different types of data streams using these Boolean results. Let's begin by discussing the setup. So we have an array of points within the range from 0 to 10 along y axis and we have 10 steps and we've created these points using construct point component. So let's say we'd like to extract certain uh, items from this list, certain points. And of course, with uh, just like with everything in Grasshopper, there are many ways to do something. But let's go now under sets, lists, and I'd like to discuss uh, the use of these components over here. So let's say split list component or uh, the sub list component. So this type of components operate uh, with index value or the domain of indices, like sublist component. But what if our aim is different? What if we would like to extract certain items not based on their indices, but on some other condition, other parameter? For this example, I'm going to delete gate or operator so that we can focus only on one operator at a time. So let's say that we would like to extract certain items, certain points from this array of points based on their position on Y axis or based on the Y coordinate of these points. We're going to construct the domain for the Y values using conditional operators larger than and smaller than and then logical operator gate end. So let's begin by right clicking on the number slider here and let's change its name. So it's Y value to compare to is a B input. And I'm also going to make a copy for the second operator connect. So let's double click on the name of the slider and change some parameters. Let's change integer values to floating numbers and let's say to decimals, click OK. And we're going to have to do the same for this one because I forgot to do it before copying. OK, so let's say we want to grab all of the points that are on Y axis above the value of, let's say, 1.5, but then below the value of 6.75. Have a look at the gate and output panel. We have some true values here indices associated with the true values will be used to extract specific items from the initial point list. And to do that, we're going to use the component under sets, sequence, call pattern. So call pattern requires two inputs, a list to call. Here we can input the points. And then the second input is required boolean pattern and if you hover over this input you can see boolean icon and also the default boolean pattern which is false false true true so let's have a look what this results into i'm gonna go under display preview and choose dot display component i'm gonna connect list output to the point input and i also need to adjust the scale for these dots and I'm also going to adjust the color as well. So in Rhino viewport, you can now see some red dots. Their selection corresponds to the call pattern input that we have just discussed. So call pattern component doesn't take items 0 and 1, which corresponds to the Boolean values false false. And then it takes items 2 and 3, which corresponds to the Boolean values true true. And then this pattern repeats itself. Obviously, you can create this Boolean pattern manually. There are many ways. Uh, the one that we're going to use here, we're going to go under params, input, and we're going to use Boolean toggles. I'm going to create a copy using Alt key and then double click on one of the toggles to change the value. And then by holding Shift key, I'm going to connect both of them to the single input. So our manually created call pattern is true 
false and you can see in the Rhino viewport that cool pattern takes items associated with the even indices. And this is just one instance of creating cool pattern manually. You can also use a panel or just right click on the input and assign boolean values that way. But now let's move on to our previously generated cool pattern that we have created using a conditional and logical operators. Let's connect the gate and output to the cool pattern input and see what we get. We have extracted five items, five points from the initial list, and this looks similar to something that we could also achieve using previously mentioned components, such as sublist component. However, in this instance, I really want to emphasize the difference between these two methods. So to do that, let's create a number slider. Let's double click on canvas and the bounce would be from 5 to 30. And let's input this number slider into the number of steps input in the range component. As we change the number of steps, we extract different numbers of items from this list. And this is because we're filtering these points based on their position on y-axis rather than their indices. So notice that the index values are obviously changing as well. And we are extracting any number of points or all the points that lie within the defined bounds. Of course, we can easily change these bounds and the Boolean values for call pattern will be automatically updated. So this is it for this video. I will see you in the next tutorial.